Behind me there is the stunning French fishing village of Port and Bassan. And it was here on the 7th and 8th of June that some of the toughest men in the ETO put in an attack against that town and were able to capture it from the German defenders here. They were the men of 4-7 Commando. The Royal Marines came in, kicked the Germans out, and then that enabled the pipeline under the ocean, or Pluto, to be laid here to enable the Allies to bring in fuel reserves to the front lines and keep their mechanized forces going. Today, I'm here to look at some then and now photos from this amazing location. So before we take a look at the then and nows, up here on the western bank is one of the former German bunkers. So let's go down inside and take a look at it. Uh, that room, probably ammo storage, um, is extreme, extremely waterlogged, but through this one here, out to the main view, see more forward ammo storage in that compartment. But out here, you can see the harbour and the approaches perfectly. You can also get a really good idea as well of just how thick the concrete was on these bunker emplacements. And so that's a good metre, metre and a half deep. And the incredible view that the Germans would have had out to sea and the surprise they would have had on the 6th of June 1944 when they saw the Allied invasion fleet arrive. Although fortunately for them, they still had another day's grace. It wasn't until the 7th and 8th of June that the men of 47 Royal Marine Commando would storm these positions and liberate the town. This is the small French fishing port of Port Embassan. Sits halfway between Aramanche, Gold Beach and Omaha Beach. And it was this little town that would play such a vital role for the Allies on D-Day and beyond. So I hope you enjoy the episode. It's a gorgeous little town. So let's go for a walk and see what then and now locations we can find. The first then and now that we're gonna look at from Port and Bassan was taken on the 10th of June, 1944 and it's got General Montgomery in the picture. Now, this was before he gained his promotion to Field Marshal, and the image itself was taken roughly from this spot here. That's the view today, that white car nicely doubling up as Monty's staff car. And here we can see the, the image itself. So there's General Montgomery stood in his staff car there a few other senior officers around, this chap being a, a naval one, and we can clearly see four stars on the star plate there, denoting that the vehicle belongs to a general, and then all necessary compliments should be paid to it. So for the then and now comparison, it was taken roughly from this spot here. And we can see that in real terms, not a lot has actually changed and even the writing on the side of that wall i'm not sure if it's the original paint it could well be more it may well have been repainted at some point but it's still there which is really great to see right so now we're going to head to the harbor and see what other then and nows we can find from port and Bassan. So for the next then and now, I've come to the edge of the harbour. It's kind of like the inner harbour wall before it gets to the basin. And that's the image. Now it's great, you can really see the, the power of the Allies' logistic operations there, the ability to sustain the front lines and all the uh, trucks bringing supplies ashore, the landing craft bringing those vehicles in and then everything on the quayside. Now that image was taken by the looks of it from most likely one of those windows up there. Now, clearly that's not something I'm gonna be able to do today, but we can look at this area and see what remains um, from World War II and what it looks like now. In the photo, you can see clearly the key side there and this massive loading ramp, offloading ramp. That hasn't changed. There's a new, new build there 
um, probably to support the, uh, the, the the fishing, I think, here. One thing that is interesting, this big concrete sort of L-shaped block that's just here to the right of the image, that still remains to this day. So if we look at the image, that's pretty much as it is in 2023. Right, so carrying on onto the quayside that we saw earlier, there's the building um, that we saw on the previous photo. This next one is a really interesting image because it shows one of the two flagships that were brought into the harbour here by the Germans to defend the port against Allied attack. It shows it in a sunken state, but it was um, one of the flagships that caused a great deal of damage for the first assault on the Eastern Hill here at Port and Bassan on the 7th of June 1944 when 47 Commando came in to take this town as part of Operation Aubrey. Unfortunately when that flagship opened up with its flat guns it killed 11 men and I think injured 17 more. And you can see there the the eastern slopes there so this is the men from 47 Commando are moving up that way to try and eliminate the German positions up there. There was about 100 Germans on that hill and the flagship opened up and, and decimated their, their first assault attempt. So that's the harbour as it stands today from the, the, the far end of the quayside. One thing when you see this photo, you'll see that the buildings um, in front there, they're sort of the cream coloured ones with the blue um, lower fronts, they're all rebuilds. I think sustained a lot of damage during the bombardments here and then subsequently all rebuilt. But if we take a look at the photo, so this is the image itself, you can see the sunken flagship there with a couple of lads looking at it, a couple of soldiers or possibly lads from 47 Commando. I say that image was taken there. We can see the uh, the, the quayside and the, and the harbour wall and that's what it looks like in 2023. So just coming off of the quayside now and then going into what is the open mouth of the basin, the, the sort of entrance to it. And there's another then and now that we can see some of the buildings from the previous one in this one. And there's a couple of other details as well that I want to point out. So we'll go and find the location for that one. So just cross over to the basin now to try and get that, uh, get the right perspective. It's always a little hard to sort of make out with some of these um, then and now photos, especially when the area has been so heavily built up. But fortunately, thanks to the original photo, or sorry, the previous photo, there are some identifying features in, in this image that help us place it. So just in relation then to where we were previously, that was um, over there. This building here was the one in the image with the really tall sort of castellated spire on top. And this is the image. We've got a WO, WOT8 four-wheel drive truck there made by the Ford Motor Company in Dagenham in the United Kingdom. And most likely members of the Royal Army Service Corps there starting to clean the rubble away from the fighting that took place here on the, the 7th and 8th of June. There's also as well this sort of big tank feature. I'm not quite sure what it is, whether it's a, it was actually a German blockhouse, but that does appear in the other photo in the previous one. And that's why we're able to place this image somewhere around there. Now, I'll admit myself, it's not a uh, it's not a perfect then and now image because quite a lot of the layouts changed. But it uh, I think it gives a good enough idea. We can see there's some of those key identifiable features there. So from that one, we've got one more, and that is up there. For those of you that have seen the film The Longest Day, this was Wiesterham. Port and Bessan doubled for Wiesterham, and we see the scene where Kiefer's French commandos burst out from the uh, the side streets and then move all the way down the, the basin to assault the Wiesterham Casino, which was a, a well-known German strong point. And that was here, as a film set, it was built. And the road I'm walking up now, approximately at least, is um, the route that the nuns take when they come down to start administering first aid to the to the injured men that were um, that were caught up in the fighting in the film so uh, it's quite cool unfortunately i don't actually have any then and nows of uh the the film i'll have to save that for another episode but um yeah i just thought that's a cool cool feature of port and so if you do come here um this is where they filmed part of the movie and they filmed the Wiesterham attack scene with Kiefer's commandos.
final then and now that I found here in Port and Bassan was taken at this location. It's the only vantage point overlooking the harbour, which we can see there. We've got the outer harbour wall, um, sea and the beach, and then the cliffs up to the uh, eastern hill that flanks the village. And that was where Captain Cousins and his men, his 25 men, on the second assault on that hill, actually managed to take out the uh, the 100 plus Germans that were manning the defences there. Now, for this then and now, this shows again the, the logistical might of the Allies and the supplies that they're bringing ashore. So that's the image. You can see the Bedford QL trucks. It looks like a deuce and a half perhaps and some shipping there all being brought in to keep the Allied war supply going or keep the war effort going, sorry. And that image was taken from about here. It's pretty cool to see it and see that other than it being a car park now, not a lot's changed in the past 79 years. Captain Cousins and his men, 25 men in all, outnumbered four to one by the Germans, had advanced from the path that we've just walked up. And then as they were making it to this location here, ignoring the minefields that were littered around this area, then came across a German position. He took four of the men, stormed the position, but a grenade was thrown and unfortunately, Captain Cousins was mortally wounded. Another Marine, Marine Madden, was also seriously injured in the attack. Leadership demonstrated by Cousins was enough to inspire his men, and they then went on to clear the positions here on the eastern hill of Port and Bassam. So just coming up here, we can see that there's still signs of some of the German positions here. Now, they've been concreted over, well covered up, but we can still see the, uh, the fortifications that existed. This looks like either an MG or a, uh, or a mortar pit. A little hard to say, and the ground is really, really uneven up here, but you can see why they sighted their positions up here. It's just such a commanding view. And combined with the flagships that arrived in the harbour that very, very much surprised the, the men of 4-7 Commando. Um, you know, they, they decimated some of the men. It just shows the ferocity of the fighting that took place here at Port and Bassan, um, which is one of those battles of World War II that was significant so that they could get the pipeline under the ocean laid here um, because the Americans couldn't push on Cherbourg for a, for a few more weeks. But, you know, it, it rarely rarely gets any coverage. I hope you've enjoyed this short then and now episode from Port and Bassan. I hope it's been interesting seeing some of the locations that you can still find if you're uh, able to come and visit here. Okay, I'll see you all in the next one.